Hey guys, day two launch of the Angry Army Ammunition AAA G Fuel flavor. Pick up a tub now, guys. Code Angry Joe for 30% off. Thank you for supporting the show. And we have yet another season finale. So we reviewed Mandalorian season three finale and now Star Trek Picard season three. Uh, before I begin, I'm going to need to lock and load. <laughs> you chug it. Chug, chug. That's why we picked that flavor. So easy to chug. Light and delicious. Okay. The final episode. Do we bring it all together? Alex said, if you do it, I'm going to give you a zero out of ten. Uh, I'm going to. Um, what we, no, no, no. Don't do it yet. <laughs> no, 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 it let's not, no, no, they Alex, please. Choice. Let me plead with you. Okay, hold no. on one second. First, I want to say, I know... Star Trek fans are going to hate me for what I am about to say, but I don't care because I always have to give it to you honest. I have to give it to, you know, my impression straight, brutal honesty, and hopefully you can forgive and respect uh, me later, especially if I give you reasons why I don't think that this works like it should. Now, there are definitely moments in here that are amazing and that work and honestly almost brought a tear to my eye. Oh, there was a couple in particular that were incredibly yes. strong. Yeah. So even Alex can admit this. Uh, but there are also moments where I was saying, ridiculous, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, right? Um, and I think that has to do a little with... Um, the writing, but I watched it twice now, and uh, I think overall, I liked it for our original crew. I liked it despite all of the flaws, uh, but there are many flaws, and it is stupid as hell, and that's the part you might agree disagree with me. Uh, the climax is absolutely ridiculous and there are so many plot holes and hand waving that it is asinine it is stupidity the dialogue treats its audience like they're morons and this is not the strong star trek writing that we are used to and we're hoping for to send off our characters now is it better than star trek picard season one and two yes it is better <coughs> that we can agree on and that we can hold together um, and I do feel like that final scene, not the post credit scene, but the final scene, which I actually think the post credit scene is completely unnecessary. We'll get there. But the final, fi the final scene amongst the original crew was beautiful and uh, perfect in that sense. So, and what I ultimately uh, sort of summed my feelings up is this. It ultimately uh, works in the ways that it needs to because I like the characters, not the particulars of the conflict, that this final climax yes. conflict. And, and so I like the particulars of it. And so if you could get into the, the nitty gritty, and I wish those were shored up, we could literally have had a 10 out of 10. We could have had a 9 out of 10. We could have had just some amazing stuff. But I think we missed that wholly. So... Uh, Let's go to Alex, because last we spoke, uh, he said that, listen, let me defend it first by saying, no. at least we didn't do the chosen one thing. That gets no credit from you. <laughs> no chosen one thing. It so kind of was the chosen one thing. Uh, I guess you're right. Through a different method, it yeah, is. Yeah, kind of. Um, and it do, it kind of doesn't it doesn't fix a lot of the issues that we brought up in the last uh, episode where we're like, mm, is Jack kind of responsible for like I don't know half of humanity dying? Uh, he kind of is, and they fast track him with a position on an important ship, as if nothing happened. It's uh, ridiculous. Uh, but you said Alex last time that if 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 they were going to win through the power of love. love that you would give it a zero out of ten. And let me just say, it's not, it's not, it, it's, it's family. Oh yeah. It's family, <laughs> not, not love, <laughs> uh, fa family, love, father, son, son, father, 
That part connects with me, and I just don't know why you hate that so You're much. You're saying the Borg were de- defeated. The the Borg, the Borg Queen was defeated. Her ultimate plan. I mean, ult- I mean, they By, blew up the thing. But like her, <clears throat> it, like at least punishing the Picards would be something the Borg Queen would be after doing, and she was denied that through the power of "I love you, son." Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's bad. <laughs> so are you going to give it a zero out of ten? Oh, you'll have to wait and see. Okay, uh, we'll wait and see. Well, I'm going to start with the good things here, uh, yeah. the, the, what I think about it. I think <laughs> that six months from now, I will forget how incredibly stupid the everything is as far as the plot and how they, they developed a, a, a game-changing fucking phaser technology with three old people <laughs> and not one yeah. goddamn engineer and, yeah. like, they're – like, sh- like – Everything about the journey of this episode is horseshit and stupid. And I don't think that there's a goddamn person in the writing room that has any capability to write sci-fi where it could have been satisfying. Now, what they did do, and they did do very well, is those are people in there that can write emotional send-offs. We got an interaction between Picard and Riker that was was beautiful, right? Mm, and like, yes. and then like them and the talking to each other, and then like finally thanking each other, and because they thought that this was the end. And so they really. Really played with our nostalgia. You know, they're oh, talking yes. about President Chekhov. Uh, there's all yeah. sorts of stuff that, that they're, they're like, <laughs> you're so happy where the characters end up. They didn't destroy the, the, the position of the characters. So six months from now, yes. I'll, I'll be All happy. of the characters kind of are in a good place. They end up in a good place. And so I think that in six months from now, I will remember that and I'll be happy because it's like, hey, Picard's, Picard's hanging out. Yeah. He doesn't have a girlfriend anymore. We're going to ignore that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're going <laughs> to forget all that. She's all, she's all doing the John Travolta. Yeah, yeah, looking around. <laughs> so like everyone is happy. And so, but as of right now, I just watched the, the episode. I just watched it once. Yeah. And God damn, there's some... Dumbass shit Fucking in this. Is stupid. And it's just ridiculous. And so it's like, last episode should have been flushed out. It should have been longer. It should have made, been three or four episodes. Mm. This one at least should have been two or three episodes. Yeah. And then you have actually a really solid season. And we don't have to do this stupid ass, fit, like, lame the spice. Rushing. I do feel yeah. like maybe we're rushing. I, or I, I use the word rushing to excuse lazy writing. And, yeah. you know, let's wrap this up super quick. Even a short scene where someone like someone is brilliant. I want Star Trek to be a group of professionals, intelli- intelligent, moral professionals working together to overcome interesting goals. Mm-hmm. And what happens are is like, hey, how are we gonna like destroy all these Borg on the ship? We can't stab them because they're main characters in, in our next series. Oh, off screen, we'll invent a gun that shoots people into a transporter room and we'll lock them in it. And and that that's it you just you just said that you created this doodad it's like that is something that used to be an entire episode for them to kind of figure that out and overcome that problem so all of the problems in this episode were just simply overcome with Picard, Instantly. yeah, Picard would be like, "Oh," and then Picard, the entire time, Picard is like, "This is what's happening in this episode little, because I don't trust that you've been paying attention." Little character moments, yeah. Even yeah. the Queen is like explaining what's going to happen yeah, next. That's in a, her that's evil exactly monologue. what I was going to say. I was yeah. like, "The Queen was like John Madden giving this play by play." Yeah, I'm like we don't need that. Yeah. I was yeah. like, "We we yeah. can figure this out. It's it's not that complicated." So, what do you think, Joe? <clears throat> I did like the acting with the old crew. I liked those scenes, but again. Both sides, uh, plot A and plot B, were still kind of fucking dumb. I agree with Alex. I don't like. I didn't want that either. I didn't want to be like, hey, I power of like. Um, I predicted like that. that last episode that we, we were going to go gonna, into the Borg mind, and yeah, then they were, was gonna, he was going to reach him better. and convince him because he's a part of the machine and only he can help with that side of the machine. Because you just can't fire phasers at Borg cubes, yeah. though apparently now you can. Yeah. yeah. So there was that, uh, the whole thing I didn't really like. And then the Rafi in Seven of Nine, it's like, all right, well, we're locked into the system. The system is one, but if we turn on our cloaks, they can't see us. But you're still connected to the yeah. system, aren't you? So it's like, no, you can't see no, us. No. So that was the dumbest fucking thing. <laughs> you can't this see us. This whole thing line of sight. is based on line of sight. This whole thing is a Warhammer tabletop game. Nah, <laughs> nah, you can't see me. Well, no. Use the laser pointer, Joe. Fuck you. <laughs> Your Necrons <laughs> can see my space marines. No. It's, are you kidding? And not a single fucking captain or crew member on any of the... All of Starfleet thought of this except for who? Rafi. Joe, and you got it right last episode when you said, I predict that Rafi at seven is going to completely single-handedly take the ship back. 
They literally single-handedly take the ship back. They they repeat the knife running over open ground on and to attack Borg. Only and they this made time, the they're shooting the Borg <laughs> they made two it feet from each other, and she's doing raw motherfucking seven of nine comes out. And she's like standing out the open yes. and shooting on the floor. And th- that's why it's like I wasn't satisfied <laughs> with plot A and plot B was just like oh my god roll my <laughs> eyes and then you have the fucking titan who literally charges every single star that thing would have been shit. destroyed oh my it god it would have been destroyed no. taking, oh that, many hits, taking that many hits shut down taking that many hits if anybody says no nah, nah. right here get the fuck out of here but as soon as like yeah as soon as like it uncloaked it would have been like Assimilated like instantly right. again, right? Or right, line of like sight. A second or two, right? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <Is> this- <laughs> I don't know. Well, at the, they, remember they blow up the cloak at the end, and they're like, "We're sitting ducks." It's like, "No, you're assimilated." Because yeah, they have line of sight you again, and they're like, "Oh no, we forgot yeah. about that line of sight thing." Oh my god! Oh, it's so so stupid. But again, but the, the, but it's the heavy scenes, lifting. It's right. heavy lifting with the original the most, cast. Like, I fucking there love that. I wanted to see more yeah, of it. It's like, yeah. okay, this is like. Getting up there, professionals as as go back who are to the good at one. their job, yes, elevating otherwise <laughs> stupid material, stupid with two O's. Agree, yeah. <sighs> All right. So, uh, well, <laughs> that's so that's what I thought people were going to be upset at me for saying, um, but I think. At least we can all agree that the original crew was done justice. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. And that's what I was hoping to see in a, a finale or a Star Trek Picard send-off. If that's the end of this end of this whole fucking thing and at least you did the original crew justice, then I am somewhat happy because you were doing Picard a disservice and disjustice. That's not a word. Uh, in season one and two. <sighs> I just, we, you know, it, it just... Mm, because there were moments in this series that the writing was on par. It's like I, I go back to that scene with Picard and Beverly. Remember that when she first, he first learns this is his son. That was emotionally yeah. charged. That was excellent writing. They're not literally spelling out their fucking dialogue for the goddamn audience. Remember they we were had having sex? a moment. Well, nine months a later. Genuine <laughs> moment. <laughs> right? And, you know, and then there were a few other uh, really, uh, you know, great character bits and problem solving that then evaporated towards the end uh, as we had to rush through and kind of wrap things up. Though I didn't notice, I'd say about uh, one, two-thirds of the episode is the conflict, and then one-third is dedicated to uh, happy time, right? So I, I'm glad that we got a little a little bit more happy time. I thought it would be like five minutes of happy time, but we, 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 do, we do quite a few hugging and quite a few uh, bits and pieces that we'll talk about here. But, <clears throat> but yeah, I feel like it, let's not go like last episode. I thought I was like, oh, we got we the gotta, war cube. This is gonna be intense. How are they gonna deal with it? And then this episode, uh, I'm like, okay, that was barely an inconvenience. It, <laughs> it, yeah, it is. And so I still think choosing the Borg was the wrong decision. But by God, if you use the Borg again, I'm going to punch you in the throat. This is it. You've spent it. Okay, not a goddamn more Borg thing. Okay. I'll allow you one last one, which is this. And they, they do try to make it seem like, oh, Borg are finished. You know, you're fa- they, they're done. That's it. That's, that's, that's it. it. There was only two. There are there so many two. other things in Star Trek true. that we could do besides the Borg, so I'm fucking tired of it. There's and one more Borg. No. Just, She's done. guarding the, the, the wormhole. No. Remember? Borg, Jordy. She, she left. She's no. still there. She left. Hanging out. Anyway, <laughs> stop. Uh, okay, so we're not doing that no more. So I guess let's let's... Let's just not. We need to go into the specifics so that we can describe why we think it was so stupid in these stupid moments, and then give praise to the character moments that, that deserve to give praise. So let's let's go with a final verdict first for episode ten, the last generation. This episode is called the last go generation. On. Oh, I already told you. Oh. I'm going to give this. I think that this is. You one, can't do that, uh, Alex. I think that had a, a great emotional moments. I think that the cast ended up in a place where I'm actually mostly satisfied. I just think that the, the journey to the destination was dog shit. We overcame the Borg through the power of love. And uh, I'm not interested in that shit. So uh, you get no points. No, Alex. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Alex. Don't do that. 
That shit is reserved for the fucking zero out of ten, the first time ever, which I don't even think it's an official zero out of ten. Fifteen years ago, when they run out there. <laughs> Let's say it's fifteen. But, but you're right. There are si- there are two moments where they run out there in this episode. So. I can kind of see it, but what about all those times? Let, let's let's think about it. Fifteen years ago, or like twenty years ago, because we're fucking old. You just got home from school. You watched an episode of TNG. It was a really great Borg episode. And then I come back from the future and said, "Did you know what? What's going to happen? Picard is going to overcome the Borg through the power of love." It's not the power of love, Alex. It, they didn't make it seem so fucking stupid and cheesy and like in that way. I guess. I guess what's happening here is that I have a connection with my father. And so when you have like a father trying to save a son or a son then subsequently tr- saving his father, that's a powerful moment for me. And I don't feel any cheesiness. I don't feel any eye rolling. I feel connection. <coughs> and especially if you become a father yourself, then I'm, I'm sure there's even more emotional gravitas, which I'm, I'm not a father yet, but I would like to yeah, be. Yeah, but it's the board. But, but, the, but the whole family, I get what you're saying with the whole power of I- Love. If, if, if Picard was like, you know, uh, the reason why you need to come back to me, son, is that I love you. And um, the son was like, I love you too, dad. Like, yeah, that would be even cheesier. Now I can see what you're saying, but I thought it was written in a smart way. The There's Borg queen literally legit- told him that Jack has to choose to leave the Borg if he's going to leave the Borg. <sighs> I cannot believe that you're going to give... The the final episode that has so many great scenes in it of a superior season, a zero out of ten, the same score that we gave season two, episode nine, that was garbage, a literal dumpster fire. There's flames all around us. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should do that, but it's your decision. I just want to make one more uh, plea. For you to factor in some of the good scenes. Oh, there's a tons of great scenes. I think, like I said, I love seeing all the, the emotional stuff. I just think that everything along the way, and I'm a man of my word. I told you that if Picard is sitting there whispering in his but son's ears. But you can be a man even bigger and say, look, I, I, I made a mistake by saying I was going to give it a Yeah, I have to do that I'm later being, once I think I'm about it. I'm being petty. And oh, I am being petty. <laughs> I'm 100% <laughs> being petty. There's, look, okay. I, I, I'm honest with myself. Okay. This is me hating this fucking thing. The Borg Queen said, I'm going to allow you on my ship. I'm going to take my ship. Still not explained. Okay. I was looking for an explanation of that. So she says, you're allowed on my ship. You're allowed to talk yeah. to your son. And he can only leave if he if he wants to. It's like, why would she let him why leave? Why the if she... fuck would they do that? And then she says, I am so lonely. There are no voices. All of the Borg are dead. I've consumed them all to do all this thing. And then Jack's sitting there. It's like, everyone's happy. There's no loneliness. It's like the big beacon of loneliness is sitting right there talking about how she's so fucking lonely. There's two. And then he, <laughs> yeah, hugs, and then he defeats it. the Borg with a hug with a fucking it's hug. because and it's Jack not even still had humanity in him Picard it wasn't complete because he's a it robot wasn't complete. When Picard has a humanity in he's literally a robot yes, I, he's a no fu- that didn't happen is what the writers are telling you he's not a he, positronic he's, body he's, his soul is intact Alex is, is no nope. yes the love for his son is intact and that will uh, go beyond Borgisms <laughs> Borgisms <laughs> can, can we give it a one can, no. can I convince I'm, you I, for I, a I'm one? going to be petty. And I'm honest right. with I'm honest with all of you people. Perfect. I'm being super petty. No, and, and I fucking and then, hate this level of writing. When you have a I'm super happy we have you, Alex. Super sca- the Borg You're not used wrong. to be scary. Didn't You're the Borg, not wrong. Didn't the Borg, we blew episode nine up for that one scene, and this has like four of them in it. The Borg used to be terrifying, right? Yeah. And they used to be like the big bads, totally fucking scary. And the Borg Queen invites them on the ship, says, I'm gonna lower my shields, I'm gonna let you fly right through so you can invade my guts and blow up my thing. I can't wait. And and then she's like, you can talk to, I'm going to let you talk to your son. I'm not going to let anyone else, all the people that are actually alive, you know, the little defender droids that fought Worf. She's not going to send any of them to stop Picard from stabbing himself in the neck. Nope. No, you get no she's points. Gonna lower shields, lower weapons, redirect weapons. It is stupid as fuck. The climax and conflict is dumb as fuck. There's no doubt about it. But you can't go to zero non-functional, especially when the scenes of retiring the D. Oh, I love that part. The, the, That's the this. poker game. I love it. You're giving those a zero as well. Uh, what's, I'll I mean, come off it. You gave it a zero. Okay. Yeah, Joe. I'm going to give it a six. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give yeah, it a six because, uh, like I said, last episode, I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be pretty intense. What are they going to do? Uh, the board basically had a welcome mat. And it was like, come yeah. on in. 
doors unlocked. Blow help, you, help yourself. I was like, what? This, <laughs> you didn't have to do that. <laughs> what? Like, you could have didn't made something yeah. elaborate. I just wrote it something. in a different way. Maybe in a different way. Yeah. But that and then the whole hey. In the same way to convey what you're trying to show, but yeah. a more intelligent way. Yeah, yeah. and the whole uh, interaction with Jack and Picard. And I was like, mm, okay, whatever. I didn't mm, like yeah. it as much yeah, either. Like, okay. And then uh, plot B, I was uh, rolling my eyes the entire time. <laughs> the Rafi... Uh, Yes. yes every, the, teleport, every, the teleporter gun? We're getting there. Thing. We will do a, a big like, breakdown. Let's when, go. Wait, when did you make that? I was like, oh, no, I, uh, you didn't see <laughs> it. Uh, I made this off screen. It's fine. <laughs> and it works. I was like, okay, all right, whatever. I made no. six of them, by the way. Line of sight. Oh, that's the thing now? That was the stupid a, this okay. thing in the world. I'm like, all right, man. Like, at this point, just do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> Just wrap it up so as long as you don't fuck up the the, yeah, the original the crew over there. and they didn't fuck up the original yeah. crew. <laughs> All right. So that's why I am giving it a five out of ten okay. because I think the original crew, they didn't fuck up. Everything else they kind of, you know, fucked up and, you know, hand waved away. Don't think about it and they're just moving. But it's like, why? Why not think about it? Star Trek is a thinking man's show. Not anymore. And it would have been so cool. And and I have to factor in that we motherfucking Star Wars in my Star Trek. We motherfucking did the Death Star 2 run. And it was like, what are you doing? That's, that's it. Star Trek is not Star Wars. You don't need to Star Wars, Star Trek. And if, if this isn't more blatant than all the times we told you that this series seems like it's trying to mimic Star Wars and darker and this and that, uh, it's blatant for you here. And then I guess Star Trek fans are like, this is amazing. I've never seen Enterprise D fly this nimbly before, so 10 out of 10. It's, it's got damaged what? shields and it took a bunch of full blasts from a Did you cube. see the actual fucking path through the cube? That would have took two hours to fucking fly Data's through. good. <laughs> he did it twice, by the way. <laughs> and he's firing phasers at the same time for no reason. All right, anyways. And he found the room, too. Exactly. He's like, all right. That room is <laughs> huge. Shut the hell up. That room, the queen. We're going to get there. I'm <laughs> ruining the shit. <laughs> same. Oh, all they right. ruined the uh, shit. It wasn't they, me. Okay, all so right. I have five out of ten, six out of ten, and <laughs> Alex Petty out of ten is okay. what it There's is. There's an asterisk on that zero. Be right. There's an asterisk oh, on Petty. the zero. Petty Officer Alex. <laughs> all right, ready? Here we go. So it, the, the episode starts with an amazing honoring of... Uh, you know, Anton, it's Anton Chekhov. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had an actor pass away who was playing uh, in the new movies, uh, tragically passed away. Uh, so I think maybe they're doing, so this isn't the, the Chekhov that we know from uh, original, maybe like an ancestor or something. Is that what I'm getting right? Uh, but anyways, it was uh, Chekhov, President Chekhov, Chekhov yeah. gives this message that, um, you know, even on Earth, people are killing each other yeah. because there's transporters everywhere on Earth. And we are under attack, and we just have to hold out and hold hope. So that was a, a good moment um, from, you know, uh, Chekhov, who hasn't been in Star Trek. The actor, at least, hasn't reprised his role for, I don't know, 20-something <coughs> years. So that was cool to see him return, if, even if it's just a voice. Um, so, yeah. And then we have... Um, millions and millions of deaths that Jack is now responsible for, apparently, because uh, he uh, he ran towards the queen of his own free will. So some so people are saying that he was under a spell, but I, no, I, I, I going, don't see that. Going back and watching, it's You're like filling it, it doesn't. In the crack. Yeah, the other issue is, let's say that he is. They're like, putting the cock mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then uh, Troy, like, the, the whole thing is, like, this This thing has an eight-hour window where it has to happen during Frontier Day. It has to, because all the whole yeah. fleet is only big. So, like, let's open his it's mind. You know how he's the weapon? Let's open his mind, like, this day. It's like, no, just put Jack in the brig for 24 hours, give him a book and, like, a hot pocket, and he'll yeah. be set. He'll be totally fine. And we yeah. wait till tomorrow. <clears throat> and you don't have to you do that. You'll ha you could – here's how you can easily keep what you want – but write it better, is that Jack is going through convulsions, and it is happening now. And if Troy doesn't go in there and help him now, then he's going to die. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, something as simple as that. And then his eyes go black, and then he fucking overpowers everyone. And he everyone, goes black, and, and then, then he just exits and the and fucking, fucking thing, and now he's no longer responsible for millions and millions of death. But no, because he's like, I'm going to show the queen what I'm made of, because I'm cool. <laughs> and, or the writers oh, think shit. that it's an, a mo- great moment right. for machismo, but it's it was stupid as fuck. Which, by the way, this actor can do no wrong. It doesn't matter if he's, you know, in a board costume and 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 oh, re- like regurgitating shit dialogue. He's fucking amazing. I love this man, and he need. I will watch Star Trek Legacy just for this motherfucker. Well, now that there's Q in it, now now I'm on board. If he really, I love if Q. He, oh, I love Q too, but it's like Even God damn it, one? it's just like the board. God, damn. do we need to do Q every fucking series? Even with number one, you watch it. Yes, that's what oh, I was about to no. say. I was like, you're if right. You're the right. new I'm number sorry. one, Joe. No, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Who's the new number one, Joe? Our favorite. <laughs> Barfy. Barfy. <laughs> Rafi is the new number one aboard. You guys are jumping ahead. I'm you said, sorry. You're, said, you're over here. I, I'm going to watch this. I have to. Are you talking I about have, the spin off? You're right. <laughs> I'll shut up. Look, I'm sorry, okay, but expecting me to believe that Star Deck can hold up against the Star Dock can hold up against the entire Federation fleet expending fire everything phasers and fucking photons and just that is ridiculous and it's stupid as fuck. You're set on stun. Okay, but <laughs> upon second viewing i heard the explanation there at the end that apparently it's not just the star dock and the star dock shields it's also the entire earth's planetary shield grid so i will then allow it if we take all of the shields of earth and then place it around star dock yes maybe uh, a full power. I think it was a perfect opportunity to include other people that are allies to the Federation and just kind of have oh, people like hold, like temporarily sure. hold them off and just say like, look, we are our planet's being invaded by the Borg. Can you come help? Yeah. And it would be that one. It sets up space fights. I love Ferengi and I love see Ferengi's a few too. of these ships getting destroyed, but that probably would have been more budget. But instead, it was just maximum Earth shields to Star Dock, and we're holding out here. Um. Anyways, uh, Picard says, Maximum Warp, engage. Again, like literally right after he just said it in the last episode. Uh, so then they oh, sort great of tea hot. go over to the uh, planet Jupiter. And he looks at Jupiter's eye and he's like, The board uh-huh, I Jupiter see it's right there. To get so you're telling skin. me there's a trans warp conduit hidden inside Jupiter. The Borg cube was inside Jupiter, and nobody in Starfleet detected this. In their own fucking solar system, they never detected the Borg cube. <sighs> Maybe the Borg cube teleported there after they took over the fleet, so it didn't matter. Motherfucker, anyway. zero out of ten, stop it. Starfleet didn't know. Ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous, and it's literally sticking out from the surface of Jupiter so that they can have their cool shot. Yeah. I get it. Uh, but Picard discovers he needs to sever this connection right so we he all goes, knew that yes what be, what began 35 years ago ends tonight and he's so gonna kill his son he, what <laughs> yeah i guess he's gonna well if he has to i suppose but i guess he probably let the whole place die if if he needs to uh he was just gonna join his son and let the borg murder all of starfleet no, he knew his son was going to turn back to good, I guess. So Seven of Nine is <laughs> leading <confident>. some <laughs> older crew members. We finally see who finally show up. They didn't show up, they didn't show up last episode, but they show up now because it's like, all right, Joe and other Joe, we, we'll give you a little bit here. <laughs> we saw what you said about Seven and Rafi with knives on open ground taking on 35 tactical board units <laughs> with a knife <laughs> in, open, in the open. So let's give them, I don't know, two or three ensigns that are old. So they retake the ship just as Joe predicted. Uh, they go to the motherfucking bridge <laughs> with Rafi, of course, because she's a badass. She's the new wharf, I guess, is what they're trying to say here. And just as Joe says, single-handedly recaptures the ship by ridiculously standing out in the open and firing like RoboCop while the Borg-infected young people miss all their shots because yeah. they're literally <laughs> two feet away from them. 
Okay. Line of sight's tough for board. Yeah. So, yeah. so they recapture the ship, and um, they're using transporter guns, which, Alex... That's cool. Yeah. I guess. It's just like, hey, what do we need right now? Like, literally right now, it's like, well, we already used a screwdriver that can do literally everything, so let's just invent a new cool gun. It's like, why don't you just break into the transporter room? It's like, hey, what if we, uh, like, fuck over the transporter and port all of the board directly into the brig? Maybe we can do that because it's on a different circuit and they've got a cool engineer, and they come up with a really cool scene to do it. They're like, I made transporter gun. Pew, 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 because pew. Give, give it a small little scene and we're fine with it. You wouldn't see how badass Rafi yeah, is. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You, you, you know you what? Need Joe Rafi made those by herself. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't have seven cells. Uh, and then, so then we get this crew retaking the bridge, and then we, we know one of these um, alien guys is the cook. He's a cook. And he's the cook on the ship. Think about that for a second. The cook on the ship. Y'all know Dilithium more about, crystals I don't know. and I don't motherfucking... Uh, he, maybe he's uh, the Joe, how do they get you? You've never seen the, how they get their food on the show. He's the one who know. talks to the replicator. So he's not actually the cook. He's just the, the guy so <laughs> stupid. He has to go, replicator, make me a cheeseburger. And then he hands you the cheeseburger. I want a cheeseburger. He wants a cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah. He's like, dude, are you just repeating what, you, what the computer says? It's like, that's my only job. <laughs> Leave me alone. My dad's an ephemeral. At the end, he puts on some salt bay oregano on it. That's the cook on this ship. On this ship. <laughs> Anyways, they're making a point that he is in a position that he shouldn't be in, and he's got to rely on training on Luna, and she gives a little speech to him, and Seven's a good captain, and he does it. That's what they were trying to do. So then uh, the and, – and I'm just riding here with all this ridiculousness that is going on and the way they film it where they're out in the open <laughs> is the stink – of uh, seasons, you know, one and two is starting to creep back in here. It's in full in full effect, despite our old crew taking center stage and, yes. and doing a good job. But over here, anyways, Jack is in in there. Says Picard, and he's still Jack. His father's convinced that there's still Jack in there, even though Worf is like, "Is there a possibility he's at a point of no return?" Nope, he's in there. And uh, so I always thought in the last episode, how the fuck are they going to take out a cube? Uh, so they, Damn, you too. know, uh, <laughs> the cube. So here's how they explain it. The cube doesn't target them. Instead, in fact, they lower their shields and redirect their weapons elsewhere. And, and what's the explanation? Picard goes, it's an invitation. What? How many times has the queen, what? How many times has the queen been defeated by uh, Picard? <laughs> Multiple times, and then she's got defeated by Voyager's yeah, Janeway, Janeway too with the virus bullshit, so what, which I think is why she's so fucked up looking. So mm. w this doesn't make sense. Is like it doesn't make sense. What my ass so many times? That's what I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> Joe. Why did she lower <laughs> shields? Why did she redirect <laughs> weapons? And why did she invite them to ruin her fucking plan? I thought maybe they would show later on. Jack is all like, -le 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 -le. I will open a door for my dad. Back door for my dad. Something like that. But it's not. But no. No, Joe. That's using your cock again to fucking <laughs> fill it up. Fill it with your cock. We're not doing that. We're not doing yeah, it, Joe. It's, it's aggressively bad writing because and, and they, they purposely put this line in. The invitation thing, as because they wanted to be clever, but it is so incredible. Because Jordy had said the cube's at thirty six percent power. He's like, "Hey, this thing's limping along." Had he just said, "This thing can do barely defend itself. It has no shields, right. and all it can do is broadcast." This is our one in yes. a million chance. Everything's fine. Boom! But instead, superior writing. He's just like, "No, it's an invitation because she's got hubris, even though she's got her ass kicked over and over." And she said she would take no fucking chances, oh, fuck. and she's not going to fight the Federation head on anymore. And is so, it you know, so was, that she can go? <laughs> Which is not what a Borg Queen does. Yeah, she would just be like, oh. But uh, yo, she's their uh, operations are deteriorating from the virus. Shh, the fuck up! Yeah. Anyways. I just want you guys to be better and demand better yeah, from the things that you love. Because I <laughs> love Star Trek 2. You're entertained and watching this freak It's fucking it, stupid. Okay? It's, it's fucking, fucking stupid. stupid. She's like, come on in. Oh, he's too far gone. You <laughs> gave him a hug. Oh, you spoiled my plans. Fuck. Hugs. Well, That's there's... shit. I didn't and know I'm you could dead. hug. Oh, Stop no. hugging him. Uh, so he needs to. So anyways. <clears throat> Woo. Excuse me. Picard. 
wants to go onto the ship. Yes. He's like, this is my, I have to do this. I'm his father, and this is what I'm meant to do. And he needs Beverly to help find him. So he's like, Beverly, you with me. Riker's like, I'm not letting you go below. So Picard, Beverly, Riker. And then Worf says, I will make it a threesome. <laughs> he's complete comedy relief. There's, Worf doesn't even have lines that are not comic yes. relief. Uh, you know, but you know what? I'll allow it. I just fucking love Worf. He's such a fucking badass. But it's a little too much from time to time. Wouldn't it be a foursome? But no, they he, meant threesome yeah, because Beverly's they three, transport. Yeah, Beverly doesn't actually go. Jack. She's lo- she's at the console. So uh, he he stops. Picard stops and turns to his crew, and this is the moment where we think, "Oh fuck." Card's dying. He's not coming back. Finally, a real death, sacrificing himself to save his son. He tells his crew, it has been an honor serving with you all before leaving. And everybody's like, you know, kind of sad. So, you know, this has some weight here. Uh, you know, as they tease this, uh, they tease him multiple times with Riker. They tease him multiple times with Worf and Picard. And there is a sense of tension here. So uh, I'll give them that. Um, the Borgs are dead, though, when they teleport over there, tele- transport over there. Um, they're all fuck. I like the the, the skulls, costumes, and makeup, skulls, skulls, and they're deteriorating. So this virus has really fucked them up. I think that was from Jane Way, and they are just uh, you know in previous defeats uh, from Picard. Though she seems to blame it all on Picard, but I think they're implying that Jane Way like this when you know some what that happened in Voyager. It takes too long to explain for people <coughs> who aren't familiar with it. I think, and so they right. just kind of hand wave. So justice for Jane Way. Yeah. Please, because she never shows up. We'll talk about that later. Uh, says that uh, he has to part ways with them here. So although they're together, Worf Riker is like, I got to part ways. And he actually knows the whole board cube because somehow it's r- reminding him <laughs> because he was connected at some point. So uh, he says goodbye. Has a really great moment here with Will Riker mm-hmm. and even Worf. And Worf, his one not uh, jokey line is Klingons don't like to, you know, uh, no defeat or farewell. So he doesn't say farewell, but he says farewell in his own way. So Jack is uh, completely borgified when we see him as part <coughs> w- Picard walks up to him, but tubes on the ground and shit. And he is espouting a new Borg speech. It's an improved Borg speech. Fire, 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 fire. fire. It it was making me a little... (laughs) No, Joe. He was like, we are the Borg. We will add your... or We will evolve with you. Just some weird shit. He said fire, fire, fire. At least it was... He (laughs) did say fire, 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 fire. He didn't say that. But at least it's better than Borgatti's fucking stupid Borg bullshit. But it's still not the original Borg speech. And it feels weird coming out of his mouth. But this is a new Borg. Was the board kindler, queen gentler board laughs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We see the board queen's face, and it's gross, and she's fucked up, and it looks cool. And Locutus has returned to me. She finds it funny because she knew it was gonna happen. And yeah. Meanwhile, Titan, the USS Titan detects Enterprise D. And somehow also detects a Borg cube at Jupiter. You know, the thing that every single fucking, I don't know, outpost, star base, and detected. ship would have detected. <laughs> because all of a sudden, Should've. Titan can detect it, even while Titan is under com- assumed control at this moment. And apparently... This is the stupidest moment. This is so we've already had one of the uh, Rafi and Seven charging the bridge, like with with knives against Borg, and now we have that second moment where Rafi is the only one that figures out that the Borg signal le- needs literal line of sight. Doesn't make sense. I like the the thought what is that there's a Borg on on the outside of every ship because the Borg can like surround and they've got a sign that says like you are Borg and if you can't see it you're no longer Borg and if you like close your eyes you're like no uh yeah they all have laser pointers that's what that thing is on the side yeah of I mean it's... anyways <laughs> fucking Warhammer tabletop rules it's fucking ridiculous and I hate it. So, what does the Titan do if they need a, a fucking line of sight? They go, oh, we're gonna cloak. So then they fucking cloak, and they can't receive the signal. 
even though you're still that, there's, no, you it's should, just, <laughs> it just makes you mad thinking about sense. it. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> sensors your can't ship was cloaks. already controlled. You're gonna hit the cloak button, and now it's not controlled. Okay, fine. So then, whatever. The collective is dead. Is 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 explained on the board cube, and only she is left. She's kind of consuming her own collective uh, because the, you you left us poison. <laughs> Jane Wayne left us poison. Uh, so, and then she doesn't want Picard. He's like, I take me instead. I'm Locutus. You're a robot. I want you. No more assimilation. Instead, evolution. Which is stupid if you think about it. The board, the current board format is way better than this new evolution board format. And well, what happens if it's cloudy outside and you lose the line of sight? Then all your board <laughs> go away. It's like, oh shit, it rained on Earth today. All the board are gone. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And they go you by. Problems with the that board goes into a house to assimilate somebody. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Superman 4 quest for peace. <laughs> Nuclear man. If, if there's no sunlight hitting him, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so cold. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm sorry, what I wrote? <laughs> uh, the Titan warps in and starts firing at the entire fucking Federation fleet and flying through them. They uncloak. Visually show themselves in li within line of sight of everybody, including the Borg Cube and Jupiter, I guess. Because if it can already have line of sight to the other ships, it has line of sight to this ship. But it doesn't immediately get assimilated because they're going really fast. They're going faster <laughs> than the signal, yeah. They're going fast. I got to go fast. And she goes, evasive maneuvers. As if that is somehow going to get you through every single goddamn Federation ship firing. I guess they're saying the ship, they're, they're not firing at the Titan, they're firing at the Starbase, and then they're just trying to distract them by getting some of their firepower as if it's doing anything. Basically, Plot B needed a reason to interact with the show, and they didn't write it well enough to just, where they're interacting. They're just like gnats. They didn't do anything. <laughs> it was just annoying. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> so for the third time, this is the girls. Charging the board with knives over open ground all over again. Number three, evasive maneuvers. Get ready for another run. We can't do oh it. Oh, my God. It's so stupid. All right. So then one Borg wakes up <clears throat> and go, goes to fight Worf and Riker as they're, you know, at the node that they need to. I hated this part. Again, shut down. Uh, Borg. So. You hated this part. Why? So the entire episode. I so I actually hate it more now that Worf was entirely used for co for comedy relief. Right, had, like it's getting on my nerves. He had one emotional moment, kind of, but even then, Riker stole that scene because that interaction between him and Riker, uh, Picard and R Riker, was so much better. And in the one time I thought that Worf was gonna like shake off and go no for my friends, he gets his fucking ass beat, and Riker has to save the day. I was like, this was the opportunity. Yeah. Everyone in this episode got to shine yeah. except for Worf. Who he was, he's, he fights he's, two Borg. I'll give him that. He fights two Borg in hand to hand, well, uh, get, sword combat. Yeah. Uh, but he gets shot multiple times. Did we forget that? We forgot that Worf is shot twice. No, there's a stain. It's, we didn't what, forget. It was a, a stain. stain. It was a stain. Oh, we're shooting paintballs now? Well, they're, they're the depowered Borg, so that's oh, yes. real weak lasers. They're it's weak. like uh, las guns. It's like a spicy flashlight. Shut it's like, the fuck up. No, see, the someone, someone's typing it right now. It's like, no, they're <laughs> depowered and they don't have any power. Uh, so uh -huh. then. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. So he gets shot multiple times. Then he uh, goes off screen because b the board regroup and they start firing. And then at this moment, this is when, for no apparent reason, the board queen, I guess, gives the orders off screen to start firing at the Enterprise. They, uh, previously, we lowered the shields. We d redirected our weapon power. You're welcome to come. Now I'm going to kill you for no reason. He was like, oh, shit, this is a bad idea. Maybe I should fly. Pew, pew. So <laughs> now they're flying and then she's very evasive maneuvers. And I guess it's Data who's, you know, dodging and that's fine. Uh, and then, but there's a line that says, uh, uh, shit, I didn't fucking program the weapons yet. We're going to have to uh, assume Manually. manual control. <laughs> and so motherfucking Beverly Crusher, the medical doctor, takes over and... She starts firing all weapons, and then you see the CGI, and she's hitting the thing. And, 
and she literally, the Enterprise destroys every single Borg cube turret, even though there is no such thing as a Borg cube turret. This is not Star Wars! This is not the surface of the Death Star! There's no fucking turrets on the surface of the board cube. The fucking lasers are coming from different areas of the board cube. They fucking energize and move together and fire. There's not a little goddamn poor, you know, whatever. So, but apparently, through her Training. amazing skills, because they were like, Jordy looks up at her and is like, how, they saw fire. And I thought he was like, Oh my God! What has happened? Is this a new phase of the fight, or uh, did did Picard or Jack stop? No, it is implied that Beverly literally destroyed all of the motherfucking weapon systems. She disabled an entire board cube on an on a galaxy class. Yeah, an old galaxy class. Yeah, Poe Dameron did it. Why why can't Beverly do it? <laughs> Remember, we are we're putting what star, it is now, uh, Star Trek Wars, and uh, that's that's what this is now. <laughs> Ugh. Manual fire from Beverly. And the Borg stopped firing because they thought maybe Jack of the Borg defeated it or the virus distracted them. No, it's because in one fail swoop, Beverly with manual weapons control completely destroys all the Borg cube turrets, which don't exist. And I skipped ahead here because there's something even dumber is that uh, there's a scene of the Titan. And it's kind of confusing the way it's filmed. Uh, they're flying through. They reuse footage, by the way. I noticed this. They're reusing the footage on the second attack run. And then just a random photon torpedo is firing point of view at them from the camera. It's just, it's just not conveyed right. I didn't like it. And then they cloak, and it slams in front of them. And everything is just starting to fall apart, you know, now. And, and she screams out, they're using predictive logarithms to find us. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You are uncloaked and flying right in front of them. They don't need to predict it. Okay, whatever. They fired while you were still visible clearly because that's what the shot showed. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you, and, you're dumb. And then I don't understand why. Why is one ship... A threat to every single ship in the fleet. So you're telling me that just, just send a small strike team of, say, four ships to hunt down the fucking Titan? Ridiculous. They don't have resources. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of, like, there's things that And I, I want... guess it's because the weakness of all the ships acting as one, they have to direct the... Re direct their attention to the Titan and that's their purpose? No, well, Borgs have independent. Mm. Like, Borgs can move independently, but, like, mm. they're all going to do the thing. It, it, we talked about this last time. Well, when what's we, the purpose of the fleet formation? The, the, they can do it, but they don't have to do it. Okay. Um, and so it's like, all you had to do was have the Titan do something. They're like, hey, it's a line of sight signal. We can do something to interrupt that. And then, then the Borg have to deal with them. You don't have to have them do a stupid strafing rung against every single ship that can fire backwards, by the way. Yeah. Even though if you're flying behind them, they can shoot you in, the, in their fucking from behind. Yeah. And you could have done this in a way that it doesn't make it incredibly dumb. And we keep cutting back and forth between these different shots, these yeah. uh, climax. So we go back to Riker, who basically shoots and destroys the Borg immediately with a minigun from inside Worf's blade that he was hiding. And he's like, what did you, what? You had this the whole time, he said, and Worf goes, swords are fun. <laughs> I was like, God damn it, Worf. What the fuck are you talking about? And what is this, the sonic screwdriver from Stevens 2? Just one shot and the Borg are destroyed, which I guess does pan out because when you first teleport or transport to a board cube you can phaser a few board before they remodulate their shields and you can't do shit so i'll allow it but i guess wharf just likes to have fun with his sword that's fine whatever anyways manual fire from beverly is that that's when this happens um yeah war swords are fun i still like it but man just the screen shows, and then finally, we're back aboard the Enterprise D, and Data is like, look at this, what I found. And Jordy goes, this is impossible. And what do they show on screen? Is it's a motherfucking maze, and they have to go all the way around multiple times with so many twists and turns to get to the center. And I was like, 
wait a minute, are we about to do a Death Star run? Like, in Star Trek? And yeah, he goes, not even my daughter could navigate through this, he says, as Data is sitting right there next to him. The living computer that's sitting right there that has, you know. But like his a, daughter is the most best pilot in the galaxy. He should have said, not well, I'm Data. not your daughter. <laughs> Data goes, fuck your daughter. Yeah, he's like, I'm not your daughter, bitch. <laughs> I'm not your daughter. So Data takes over and he basically convinces them. They're like, no, we cannot let you do it. And he's like, my gut says I can do it. You're what? He said, my gut. Just trust me. God damn it. And they're like, all right, fine. And let's go with his gut. And uh, so then he takes over and Troy's like, I sense pleasure. Or I sense excitement. And he's <laughs> And I'm like, is Data, is Beverly still firing or is Data? I think it's Data. So he's also piloting and firing as he goes inside the ship. And then um, the cloak on the Titan. Oh, no, no. Finally, the planetary shields go down. Because that's that one line that tries to excuse how, how the space dock has such power. Now, the DS9 was shown to be pretty fucking tanky and powerful in the Dominion War. But this is crazy yeah uh but they say the planetary shields are down so then that leads us to assume that the planetary shields were modulated to protect or pushed or given to the space dock but it's finally destroyed shields go down god the whole thing is tipping over god, there's multiple fucking photon torpedoes and lasers jesus christ so okay maybe slightly i can Slightly do my disbelief, um, uh, lower my disbelief with that explanation. But the cloak out of on the Titan, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. It's with not it. a big deal, right? That out of everything. So then the cloak <laughs> on the Titan is destroyed from inside the ship. It was the the Borg, the LaForge sisters. Yeah, they're super strong. These Borg that have no nano things and they're now super strength and they can but rip I open they doors. Were trapped or something? Yeah, but they, I guess were, they were trapped. They were locked in the transporter room. And they, they didn't shut the other door behind them. They, they just did. They ripped open. the door yeah, open. Oh, that's right. Open. Okay. But why didn't they rip the door open to the bridge? Because uh, they needed line of sight, so they went to go take the cloak out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why did you say that? Picard starts unplugging his son, and the queen says, no, you'll kill him. Uh, only he can choose to leave now. And that is when I knew this episode was getting a fucking zero. Yeah. I she literally like, no, I gotta she go literally I was like, I knew that spells thing. it out for <laughs> yes. the audience. She literally says... Go talk to your son and use the power of family. She's like, I'm so stupid. Why did I let you in? <laughs> why did I say this? <laughs> why did I let you in? Why did I what am I exactly? doing? Yeah, how am I, why am I Please. telling you? You will never save your son. Do not disconnect the red wire. If you disconnect the red wire, then my whole plan is ruined. Oh, fuck. <laughs> she was why just there helpless watching. The she was just helpless watching. <laughs> she right. does have power of like all these little uh, control things at all times. She just chooses oh, they not to showed, use them. They showed yeah, that she, hitting. Um, yeah, they, in yeah. the last episode, his son got hit with the tentacles. Yeah, but not anymore. The tentacles are tired. Oh, the the refractory. Oh. The Borg are old. It takes a long time oh. for our tentacles to come back to attention nowadays. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, like writhing around like a worm. Yeah. But I think she looks cool. It looks amazing. And you're right. If she was in her fucking robot form at full power, she just picked up a card and fucking threw him across the room. But mm -hmm. not not powerful. I hate how the dialogue tells you what's going to happen because they think you're an idiot. I do like the length of the episode, a little more than an hour. Mm -hmm. um, now, with the cloak gone, they say that we're dead in the water. It doesn't matter. You already assimilated. No, yes, but they well, can't because they... Target lock, target lock, target lock, target lock. Initially, when I watched it at first, I thought, wait, are they target locking the Titan? Mm. But why? Because he's now assimilated. No, they're, they're target yeah. locking all the cities. But yeah. why? But that's why I was so confused because... But Why? <laughs> They show that the cities are being assimilated. And that, and if you target the cities, you're going to blow up your Borg in addition to the old people. How does that make sense? <laughs> target lock, target lock. So then Alex came up with the perfect explanation. Yeah. Yeah, it's old people photon torpedoes, and so it's it, not gonna hurt the young people. No, no, because what it they're does gonna is gonna fire old people photon it's torpedoes. It's the early bird special, and so you know you go down to Luby's and you get the liver and onions, and so those those missiles come out as uh, disguised as dinner at four p.m. Yeah, and it's just like it only gets the old people. Right, <laughs> it'll hit all the population centers, mm -hmm. and the old people torpedoes <laughs> will kill all the old people. So they go to the center, um, and the Enterprise D makes it to the center of the Borg, uh, uh, the Death Star, I mean the Borg Cube, and prepare to fire. No, wait! 
if they destroy the beacon, it's going to kill everybody on the cube, including their friends, Riker, Worf, Picard, and I guess Jack. Um, they get a they get a transporter lock on Riker and Worf, but not Picard. Mm-mm. Riker refuses. He's like, you saved my life so many times. I'm staying. Troy, and as soon as Troy dropped this line, I was like, oh, everybody's getting out. She goes, Will, it, after they say, there's no way we can save you, she says, there, you do have one minute to get back to the ship. I was like, ah, oh, there's, we're, they're going to survive. That was a long minute. Yeah, it was a long minute. Well, I actually did time it. And it does actually work out to be about a minute, so I was impressed there, and I okay. put a little note. Uh, John Luke Picard <laughs> plugs back into the Borg Collective to get his son out. Uh, it's more like two minutes. Uh, and in, in the Borg dream world, just as I predicted, uh, the last episode, that they talk as father and son, and Picard has said that he's always kind of had a, a barrier between him and, and his new family with um, you know that he found in Starfleet. Uh, but even with all that, he's still... Wasn't all that happy and went home to die alone. But he realized the hole in his heart was uh, you are the part. You are the part that I never knew was missing. Uh, you're, you're my son. And he uh, touches him and then hugs him. And uh, and then that's when I wrote down we're out of time. Oh, but then it says right there. Uh, LaForge says they're out of time. So And then somebody says, well, I hope they have more time over there. But we don't have more time, so we're going to fire. Fire torpedoes, and then destroy the center. And Worf goes, it is a fine day to die with honor. Yeah. Can Picard have a happy ending? Or does he need to be sacrificed, is what I was thinking at this moment. It's like, which way are they going to go? Can he have a happy ending? I just want Picard to have a happy ending. Like retire on his fucking stupid winery, have his he son did, come over. He did, and he hated over. it. Well, now and he has. We, his you know, I think some of the captains deserve a happy ending, and and he does get it. So I was happy for that, and that's why I said I like half of the episode. I like some of this. It's just so stupid how we got here, and I wish it was written better because it could have been a culmination of all of it in a nine or ten. Picard says, "If you won't leave, I will stay with you until the end," and that hits his son in the feels. And he goes, you've changed my life forever. Doesn't say son, doesn't say I love you. He could have said I love you, son, or something like that. But they don't go that far into the cheesy writing. So I guess I respected that a little bit. And he hugs him, which does make me feel. I felt stuff, you know, because my father and stuff. And despite all the ridiculousness, the whole idea of like, no, fuck it. You know, I'm going to go and save my son. I'll just die with my son if I need to. And then he saves his son, and then his son's like, Psh! and then saves his father. And I was like, this works. It's the love thing. It's the family thing. Alex is going to hate it. but it Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean. It, it pa- still works, Alex. Pa- the Borg Queen lost to love. If he had plugged in and fought the Borg Queen, and he had it's been not, like. It's not that she lost to love. It's that she lost to a little bit of her hubris. It's the evolution of these new Borg. It's her, she planted the seeds and allowed it to grow a mixture of Borg and human yeah, stuff. I, but when you do that, the human side has that capability of rebelling and resisting. And so this new Borg resists. She invited Resistance him. Is futile. She, he literally said, you're inviting me. She invited Picard to be yes! with love. That's why we don't like it. That's why we gave it a 5 out of 10. If they had written it to where she didn't do that stupid shit, and then she, yeah. Or I get it, but... But see, your problem's not with the actual. Oh, it is. Luck. It is. No, it's just it's like not. I, I, I seriously, I really don't think that the Borg under any certain like if the Borg is supposed to be this giant powerful entity that well, when they plug then, in, you have no virus. free will. Yeah, but if if then she if she know then she would know that she is weak and she would not allow Picard in that room. She would not allow himself to plug in. <laughs> right. She would stop all of these other things. The or fact at least do her best to stop. She did him. nothing, and right. so she sits there, and then he gives. She opened the door for him, and then so she he, she got defeated with a hug. And Picard at one point says a line like, "You don't leave the doors open if you want the wolves to roam free, or the wolves to come inside." Yeah, right. So, but then she so she wanted the wolves to come inside. Why? So she could lose. What? That's the million dollar question. That's the million million dollar dollar question that we don't understand. Why did she do that? It's because the virus, Joe. She was acting stupid. She's only 36%. A motherfucking cube at 36% is enough to destroy an Enterprise D, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. This act, though, of kindness and love from Picard and family makes Jack feel. And he sees flashes. So he sees all the moments from season three 
uh, you know, that uh, and that they're laughing and having a good time. And just because I love this actor and I buy his acting and I like the car and John and Patrick Stewart, it works for me. Okay. I know it may not work for you. Did it work for you, John? Not really. Nah. No. No. I mean, I, I like, I I like mm-hmm. you know, interesting family relationships. You know, I've got a great relationship with my parents too. Yeah. It's just I just every time I see this in writing, mm-hmm. it makes the bad guy look ridiculous. Yeah. And the Borg are not ridiculous. They have never, other than J- Jaborgi or whatever the fucking name is, mm-hmm. it is so insulting. If you if you I appreciate bad guys in any of the writing, and then when you write them competently mm-hmm. and you make them scary and then they lose to something like this, you have disrespected characters you're trying to make me like, and you've proven... I, I just... I don't know who this is for. I mean, they're, they're trying to trick you with, like, nostalgia and, and emotions that mm-hmm. are yours, and that they're trying to... Ma- like, they're trying to manipulate you to feel your own emotions yeah. in a situation that they didn't themselves did not earn. Well, and this is how you feel, and I, I disagree. I agree with you up to that point. I want her to do everything that she can because she knows that this is a, a gamble. The Borg are taking a gamble on Jack because of the fact that he's hybrid Borg human, right? But she didn't – it does make no sense where she opens the door and allows them to fuck the plan yeah. up. If she did everything that she could and she just wasn't strong enough because she was simultaneously controlling the goddamn whole goddamn Federation fleet and she has to fucking delegate resources, yeah. fine. And and then that's when uh, Picard is able to convince his son through diplomacy, as we know Picard does, and even through family. Now he's able to get it. And then fucking Vin Diesel walks in. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. And then somebody grabs his face and tries to <laughs> shove him back through the transporter. Stop it! He's tried to show up in the Mandalorian joke. Yeah. And now he's trying he's to show up here. Three times. Family. He pops up. <laughs> so Riker says goodbye. Uh, because he thinks he's going to die. We will be waiting uh, for, for you, Troy, me, and our boy. Uh, but luckily, Troy, I guess through that psychic connection and his reaching yeah. out to her, is able to sense where they are on the ship. She jumps into action boop, boop, beep, beep, <clears throat> and gets them out of there. So she finally uses her uh, Betazoid. Betazoid powers. And uh, time or the Borg is over. And this is true, or maybe we can excuse one last adventure. Oh, okay. Uh, I mistyped that. Basically, this is the last time the Borg, okay? No more Borg. One last Borg adventure. The Borg that is done. That's this it. is it. No more Borg. I swear to God. If there's one more Borg, I'm going to be so pissed off. A main off. character is a Borg still. A main character from That's the whole fine. series. That's fine. But not a big Borg queen threat coming with a cube. Stop it. And she goes, you'll always be alone. And he goes, I'm, I, sometimes her voice modulator was a little too much. It was kind of difficult to understand her. But he goes, I'm not alone, says Jack. And he looks at his father. Dun, dun, dun. And then Enterprise D shows up over their head like a Black Hawk helicopter. <laughs> what the fuck? They shrunk the Enterprise D <laughs> so fucking much so it could fit <laughs> in this tiny little room. Wait, no, Alex, it didn't enter the room. It was it was above the room, but it's just dumb looking. It makes, yeah, it, it makes it look like there's a giant, like, seven football fields worth of space above them in this. The, so the cubes are 100% hollow. <laughs> right. And then, so then, he, they beam them up. Why they needed to be so close to beam them up? The, I don't know. There's interference from the cube. Okay. So, 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 yeah. Got it. Uh, don't understand why the enemy sits there with their weapons powered up. Or raised, even walking towards them, unable when to they fire. Were they're standing. Way before. They're standing two feet from them on the bridge, and they don't fire. But it's plot armor. And then the show tries to excuse it by showing the queen going, ah! and then the powering down. <laughs> so she wasn't. She wasn't thinking about pull trigger, pull trigger. Or it was Jack, Jack that is was. outside that. So, but then why are they still walking towards them? Why are they powering their way? Because the, the the message kept going. And okay. it, you know, it takes a he, while. They, it takes needed, a while. they needed the fire. It takes a they while. have the approach, yeah. but not the fire order. Fine. We will excuse it. Blah, blah. It blows up. Severing uh, even more link. If the board queen was able to do maybe some. I don't know. So then they all hug. And then this is when. Whew, wow. Everybody lives. Jack and Beverly get to hug, and everyone is alive. It's nice. It's nice. <coughs> the girls stand and pose for a picture on the Titan for some reason. They're all like, <laughs> I'm like, who, who are you? <laughs> are you? Is it? Did I miss something there? I don't know. They're just standing for a picture. 
Or I think they're on the view screen. Maybe they're looking at each other. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So the the girls are showing that Jordy showing Jordy that his daughters are ah, alive, yes. and that, that was the big. Thing. And uh, so then Worf, <laughs> he Worf sits on the chair and goes, and then he farts, <laughs> and then it's like Isn't super, fart? and then it's super funny because now Worf is a fucking joke. Apparently. No, I liked this one because this is like Grandpa Worf. Yeah. Motherfucker <laughs> does his business. He gets on that chair. My grandpa has a fucking chair, and that's the chair. Once you get in that chair, you're done. Yeah, those comfortable chairs are dangerous. Yeah, (laughs) dangerous. So I loved it. Grandpa Worf. And um, what else? Uh, So we get a narration from Riker who says, Captain Log Stardate 1? What? I guess post-Jack Slaughter. (laughs) Uh, Beverly heads the medical research team. One year later, they built Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Yeah. Well, I guess like, it is yeah, one year yeah. later. Yeah. One year later, and they already built the thing. It's yeah, pretty fast. so to reverse the transporter stuff, so she's able to cure everybody going through transporters. She's even able to cha- uh, find the changelings. And then they dropped a line that the changeling kept everyone. They did not kill their targets because of their need for information. They're getting revenge on Starfleet. But they didn't kill them I because they like that. that's I, a I fucking like that. lie. <laughs> it's a fucking lie. It's so that we could get the real Tuvok. And he pardons the entire Enterprise crew. And I like this scene because I like Voyager a lot. So seeing Tuvok give essentially seven of nine uh, the speech, the discipline speech. And she's like, just don't just stop. I will resign. And he's like, well, you don't need to resign. Here's the message from Shaw. Motherfucking Shaw dead names her again. Even in death, Shaw's dead naming her is funny. Good old Shaw. But no, he says yeah, uh, she's amazing, and I would recommend her for captain. And so uh, Tuvok says, your resignation is denied, Captain. Captain Nine. That's awesome. I like it. I like that Tuvok was there. I wish the camera would have panned, and there's Janeway or something like that. Why Janeway wasn't in here? I love Janeway. Uh, n- n- justice for Janeway, justice for Cisco. I don't know why. <laughs> Anyways, I think Cisco retired from acting, but I think he would willing to come I've back. Maybe they're saving. <laughs> they're saving these two for the future. Janeway's already in Prodigy, so I'm wondering. Oh, but it's animated, so I'm wondering if she's like, hey, I don't, I don't look good yet, or I'm still working out, or I, I don't know what's going on. But maybe she'll show up later. Worf, I have been told tears are bodies' weapons against pain. I hope yours to be happy. And uh, he has a moment with Rafi. So apparently, Joe, Rafi's face was broadcast <laughs> across the entire galaxy because Rafi's the hero. <laughs> She's like Hercule. Uh, she's like Mr. S- oh, you, S- you did everything? The Dragon Ball Z you universe. You did everything? <laughs> <laughs> Man. She's so awesome. And, so, and her son now wants to see her again because she's like the galaxy savior of the like, if you what? can't handle me at my worst, what does, what does my she best? have on the producers and writers of this show, man? It's amazing. I, I actually wanted this son to be like, well, you're off the drugs, though, right? Before you meet. And she's like, oh. But Joe oh, made a really not. good joke <laughs> as Warp was giving his That speech. would seem character, says, like and his also, character, right? just say no to drugs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <That would laughs> For seem, the future. Yes. Yes. It was in character. What is a good joke? I wish he would have said it. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it turns out that Worf is the one that leaked all this information yeah. because he wanted her son and her to repair. And Worf's a badass. They embrace. You so I like the Worf hug? sign. <laughs> I'm fine with a hug. Yeah, fine with a hug. Yeah. I, I, I would have been pissed <laughs> if they made Worf cry, and I was hoping that they wouldn't do that. He doesn't cry. Yeah. I saw it on second. You know, he's he is feeling something. Yes. Though, but he's, mm-hmm. he's not crying. Because he's like tears or something. I I, I, Worf didn't have any cool moments this time. I really wanted him to have a time to shine. He's got a lot of good jokes. Jokes, but, but not like the heroic moment. Yeah, he does hold off to Borg, for, but that's yeah. about. The thing it. is, his ass beaten, shot a b- billion times. Yeah, but it's. Too and I didn't Borg. know that. So but Riker so just instantly killed two Borg. I know, but he wanted to have fun with his sword, Alex. So he could have whipped out his <laughs> fucking gun and killed him himself, but he wanted to have fun with his sword. Yeah. Data on being human with Troy. He does all these counseling sessions now. Like this is one year later, and he's like constantly harassing Troy. It's just like fuck. He's out. Oh, these sessions are so long. As as Data tries to figure out being human, as a culmination of Data's fucking, um, you know, 
his plot line throughout the entire TNG, you know, series. He finally achieves it. And now it's an even bigger journey because being human is so complex. He even tells a touching story of how he saw one of the crew members feeding his cat and it just made him break out into tears because, you know, Data had a cat at once at one time when he passed away. And that would make a human being cry, you know, when you're reminded of your, your pets and, and, and passing away. So, um, and then it shows one year later. So I guess a lot of this stuff happened instantly, uh, but because it now shows one year later. If the past ever mattered, this is proof. The D now takes her spot in the museum, and the old guys shut the ship down. And they're going, I'm going to miss that voice. And it's a cameo from the original uh, voice act. She was in the original series. I forget her name, but she had passed away. Um, I don't know how they, maybe they voice modulated her or she had said <coughs> some of these previous lines before, but it's really cool to hear that voice if you're a big Star Trek fan. Um, and then they show the Star Dock. They're the Star Dock has been rebuilt in one year. They're easy to build. What the fuck? The entire Star Dock has been rebuilt. When did they build it? Yeah, you know it's going to take it. It's a multi year, multi decade adventure to fucking rebuild the Star Dock in the first place. Probably to repair it. But whatever. We're just fucking. S this is fast forwarding. They stunned. <coughs> Jack is they nervous stunned. in a fleet outfit for ship duty. Uh, they pay lip service to nepotism, which at least they paid lip service to it. Uh, Jack has been care. fast tracked. He, yes, I don't care. His name is Picard. He killed. Millions, millions of, people. of people. He probably still has those visions, and we don't know what's going to happen. He was like, oh, no, you're Or there's good. a possibility, you're right? You're good. <laughs> He's assigned to the Titan. <sighs> he, for, he says names don't mean anything. It's like this entire series was based. The only reason that they, didn't, they came for you is because of your name. This whole series is that names matter. Picard. Um, not anymore. Uh, it's not called the Titan anymore. They rechristened it. The Enterprise G. I was like, oh, fuck. I thought maybe uh, well, for a minute there I was thinking, oh, is it going to be called the USS Picard? Picard but yeah. no, that's post uh, humus. What's the word when you pass away? Po yeah, exactly. Posthumously. Uh, because there is a Sulu ship, the USS Sulu, and there's another one for um, Scotty, I think, has one. But it is Enterprise G. I, and I kind of thought, it's so weird. Like, when they showed the Titan, it's like, are they pretending this is the Enterprise? And it was. I kind of thought they might make the Titan the Enterprise when they completely changed the class of the ship. Because the Titan is supposed to be a Luna class, and all of a sudden it's this new Constitution 3, I think, is the class of the ship. So I was like, okay. And then they do it here. They make this the Enterprise G. And guess what? Who's the fucking captain? Joe? Seven of nine. And who's her number one? Barf. <laughs> Barfy. And Jack is an ensign. He's pretending that he's the captain. And she's like, get out of here. And so they made a pirate, a spy, and a um, thief. Thief. Uh, 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 gave them their own ship. And he's like, what What am I? And she's like, you're the special counselor. Number two. To the, you, you, you will pleasure me when I, when I want. I'm like, oh, sh ooh, shit. Is this a love triangle or something here? Uh, and LaForge is on the ship, too. So I don't know. Nine, nine is, um, then they're all like, hey, now that you're captain of the Enterprise. So I never thought, I, I, I didn't think that, I think she'd be captain of the Titan, and that's fucking cool. She makes it her own ship, Titan uh, thing. But <clears throat> for her to command the Enterprise, Seven doesn't really have a connection to the Enterprise. I would have been really cool if she could command, like, the Voyager B, like a new Voyager, because, like, that ties into <clears throat> her. But I guess she spent enough time with Picard and the original cast that it's like, look, if all these older uh, cast members, our older crew, don't want to do anything else, and we had to retain one person from this fucking series as the new captain, who would I want it to be? Seven. So I'm totally fine with it. I'm fine with it being in the Enterprise G. Uh, I wish Shaw was still alive. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> so they don't show her saying, though. They say, hey, you got to come up your, with your own thing. You know, like uh, punch it or engage or, you know, this. And they don't show it. What do you think her saying is? Take some um, guesses. You go. I don't know. I got, I got a few. You go. <laughs> you go? Yes. Um. Uh, it's okay. So she's a Borg, right? So she could do proceed, you know, something very simple like Pros that. Uh, commence war. 
<laughs> very uh, seven, and uh, or she can do uh, do it. I, I think would, that was Janeway's. Uh, uh, I, want, I don't know. I want what the was gone th- in sixty seconds. Let's go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice That's job. That's what I want. <laughs> Knew you'd come up with something on the fly. What was that garbage one <laughs> that job. they showed on the advertisement? Oh, yeah, so they're, they're trying to do an bad. advertisement for uh, Brave New Worlds, and they're, they they sit down young Spock, and it's like, Spock, you do your thing, and he says something, and we just look at I each other like, that is the cringiest thing like, ever. Oh, my go God. Let's go forward. Let's, do, let's go do the thing fast. and go forward, and uh, yeah, I'm oh. a Vulcan. I'm awkward. Ha, 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 um, and then we get the old crew at a bar, and she's uh, uh, we get a line, uh, have some more prune juice, because so we're I'm fucking love. The drink. warrior's drink. Uh, and they're talking about taking vacations. They have one final toast, but Data gives the final toast to Picard. He gives a little speech. He tried to tell a dirty limerick first. <clears throat> that was funny. He's never gotten to finish his dirty limerick because it's a rated G, G show. Or I don't know what this is rated. But um, <coughs> Picard reveals uh, he's got some cars to play poker. Only this time they play as a family or a closer family. Because the ending of TNG, Joe, is Picard finally joining this poker game that they would have. He never would join them before. And he jo- and he goes, you know, it's more very professional. But he's taken that first step to finally join the crew. Here, he's 100% a part of the family. They're laughing, the camera fans. Mwah! Mwah! Perfect. That's perfect. Worf's like, I fold. And then it's like Riker versus Picard in the final hand. And Picard wins. And he says, the stars have always been, <laughs> my, has been, <coughs> has favored me. And they laugh and smile together. It only brought me to tears. The main theme plays. And this is a nice ending for this crew. Nice the overhead fucking shot. movies didn't do uh, this justice. This is what has done justice. And it's a potential beginning in this new era for as long as these actors can or are willing to work. I don't know how much many it, of them will be with us for much longer. It makes me sad. It makes me sad. Like, I wanted to see this in the first two ep- or first two seasons. Yeah, and enjoy me this too. journey with them. But we, we only get like a couple. So much time. We get like five episodes with them. I was like, man, I really wish it would have been like multiple seasons of that. Yeah, and it sucks. Well, we're at um, one hour and twenty minutes because this is important to us, and I like doing this breakdown. With it's y'all. not over yet. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Series. What do you think of the series so far? The, you have to get I the can't believe well, no. I didn't do a series ready, but you're right, Joe. It's yeah, we're not over yet. Keep going. At the post credit, uh, it's Jack uh, looking through his bag, setting mm-hmm. up his room, and then uh, Q. Q. Q shows up. He says, I'm going to put you, uh, your father's trials are over. He goes, I thought you were dead. He's like, young mortal. And I knew that shit. I knew as soon as Q was going to die, he's not going to die. Stop thinking so linearly. Li- li- linearly, Lin- um, your your father's trial is over, but there's a new trial for you. And I'm I'm thinking, look, I really love you. I love the actor, but we already used him, so it's like, do we need did to we keep, use him though? We do we need to keep recycling the same old stuff over and over? No. Can we now meet new cues and new f- and forge new stories? So I think it's unnecessary to sequel bait by using Q, but it's clearly there to please the fans and excite them. Even though I think. Our fans are already excited. I think fans are down for for nine as captain. Uh, Jack, great actor. Barfy. I'm looking for... Don't remind me. Uh, <laughs> we're not getting the Wharf spinoff series with her, it looks like. Or at least I hope not. And I can tolerate her if she if, if we do this. And like we said, Rafi was getting better this season. They, Though she still had the ridiculous moments. Yeah, when they were treating her like a, a member of the crew and like a, a contributing member, it was amazing. When they were treating her like a superhero within Star Trek, it didn't Shoving work. it down your throat? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> really shoved it down. I just think they need better writers and some top talent uh, if they're going to proceed with um, uh, Star Trek Legacy. So... Um, I noticed no Janeway, no Cisco. Um, they fast track Jack ever. He's assimilated and responsible for millions of deaths with hidden board DNA that unleashed itself unexpectedly, and they don't care. And I'm like, no, it should be a new ship design for Enterprise G, <laughs> a new one. Uh, I guess it's inevitable when it was the Constitution Class 3 instead of a Luna class. Um, and then finally. One last classic Star Trek teth, uh, Star Trek trench run to blow up the Death Cube as the goodbye. Wait a second, that's not right. <laughs> there was somebody on Reddit that, that I liked that. Um, 
And to this day, I still have no idea why, and they never explained why the Borg Queen lowered her shields <laughs> and uh, <laughs> redirected her weapons and invited them. You aboard. won. <laughs> you fucking won. I have the explanation. It says right here, <laughs> riders. That's the writing room. Yeah. Well, she was actually so Dr. Evil. <laughs> so, series... I mean, season three verdicts go. Um, torn between a six or seven. Uh, I, 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 I did really enjoy a lot of the original cast. Obviously, let's take it all in. It started off kind of strong. I'm gonna go with the seven. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, it's dipped big time. Yeah. Because uh, we had the whole uh, mm. wharf and Rafi side dynamic story duel and a lot yeah. of stupid ass plots. A lot Nonsensical. of like stuff that didn't make sense, but overall, like, I really I want to see the original the now. I want to go back and see the other stuff because like this cast really right. like really brought this uh, season up for yes. me, and I enjoyed their acting, and Jack did a great job. So yeah, seven for me. He was Talk very to your enjoyable. Actors. Way better than season obviously one and, two. one and two. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with a 7 out of 10 as well. We're going to save Alex for last. I was thinking, again, between 6 and 10. It is uneven at times, but they did reach heights that yes. I did not think that Star Trek Picard was capable of. And in many times, it felt like the writers were completely different. It's just towards the end, as we're rushing and trying to you know, come up with reasons on how this is happening, it started to get back to that old style of writing that motherfucking Rafi and Seven of Nine charge over open ground against 50 Borgs with uh, Borg rifles. Uh, and they win off screen. That's the kind of stuff that kept happening that, that would drag down these seasons. And that happens like four times in this episode. But because in, in subplot B uh, and sometimes in A with the old crew just being led aboard um, the board cube. But it, it ultimately works because of the talent mm -hmm. uh, of the actors and yes. the acting and the emotions are there and the justice is done to the original characters. And if we never see any of these characters again, I feel good that they had uh, like their moments. Now, I do think that we should see Worf again because I want to know what happened to the Enterprise F. Uh, and and uh, Terry Metalis e. did confirm... or. E? Yeah, F yeah, got, yeah, F, F got was the new one. Yeah. Wait, no. What's the one that came out during the fireworks? F. That was F. Uh, didn't get blown up. Uh, is, the ladies just got shot on it. Oh, so we never know if that, if, uh, sh sh well, what's her name? Shaw? No, that's not Shaw. Shaw is Shelby. Dude. Shelby. We don't know if Shelby's dead. I assume she's dead because she took two shots to the chest. Like, uh, and Shaw only took one. Um, but yeah, I want to see more Wharf Riker. Let me say. The standout star of this season was not Picard. It was Riker. That motherfucker carried this show. Jonathan Franks, not only is he a good director, because he directed some episodes, but he's also a really good actor. And having Riker in key central parts was great. So um, those motherfuckers really did their job right. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. I wanted the lady Seven. to be the main villain, too, because she did a great job as well. Mm -hmm. I really like yeah. that. Yeah, and you know what? Speaking That's, of that, yeah. we never see the floating fucking cloud head. What the fuck? What did I tell you that the changelings yeah. would never show up again? You saw one kind of. Yeah. Oh, when he came out of the transporter? Yeah, but it's like, okay, well, but what about the fucking floating head guy? That was a Borg Queen, a voice modulator. Can you explain this? Oh, is no. it? Or no. is there a changeling leader yes. somewhere? Like you said, writers. Right. <laughs> writers. <laughs> All right. That's why it's a 7 out of 10. Yeah. And it, it kills me because all it takes is some script doctoring. You can actually still retain all of this. You can even retain the Borg, even though I don't want it to be the Borg. But you can retain the Borg. And you still could have achieved 9, 10 territory. Alex. Uh, I think that this season was a little bit of a triumph uh, after the first two. And I want to give Terry uh, a ton of credit. Now, I don't think that... I think they're doing their own thing. Because this, in a lot of times doesn't feel like Star Trek at all or what I know to be Star Trek because I'm not a big new Trek guy. Black leather jackets. Yeah, it's so much it's darker, it's uh you know leather. It is more about you know emotional storytelling. It's less about science fiction and it's more like 
there's a problem, we magically overcome it with a doodad that we just invented, or, yes. or there's no group thing, a discussion to figure out a d- diplomatic situation. Problem presents itself, they immediately overcome it, but what's important in this series is seems to be the emotional connections. Mm-hmm. And so for them doing their own thing, I give them a lot of credit because I think they completely and totally failed on almost all of the science fiction stuff. Yes. I think they failed pretty heavily on everything as far as what the Federation is like, what the Borg are like, what the bad guys are like, what the changelings are like. But I think they really did a good job with the original cast yep. and the original crew. And like I said before, I really kind of like the insanely fan service. It's dumb that everyone lived, that everyone just has a happy ending. And it's, I it's, it is, it. it's fan I service it. to the highest fucking level. But like I said, Nobody I'm a dies. fan. I'm a fan, and sometimes I like You thought maybe service. one of the actors would be like, I'm fucking tired of playing my character. I will agree as long as I die. But they managed to not do that. Yeah, I mean, Picard technically died because he's a robot now. But um, I think that was a writing mistake. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> He's Even they kind of hand wave, and he's he's a, he's a robot. Now. He didn't have to be a robot because Q can just snap his fingers. And he's no longer a robot. But we're not going to go there. Maybe but we'll so do that in Star Trek Legacy. Yeah. Uh, Jack will win his trial, and as a reward, his father gets to be a human. Being. Something, yeah. yeah, something like that. So I think that for what we got. Even though it is not what I wanted at all, even though it went in a wildly <laughs> new direction, I think it was successful. And so I do think that this is an above average series. And even though I like, in, in a super petty, silly way, I gave the last one a zero, I'm also going to give this a seven because I think there were so many great high points in yes. this season. Now, there were some awful dog shit parts in this thing. And yeah, like, whoever was involved with that, you just got to learn from it. And just and don't do the thing where you get defensive and like, no, only the, don't the haters. Yeah, yeah no, it's like, look, that shit does not work. Racist. You cannot have a character that becomes Superman in an episode when they're just supposed to be a normal fucking person. Star Trek's about collaboration, not individual superheroes yeah. doing stupid shit. And so I think that this is good. Like, with Strange New World Season 2 coming out, I'm kind of interested in seeing this. I kind of want to see where legacies go. So I think that we're kind of maybe going in the right direction in Star Trek. It's not a direction I wanted to go into, yeah. but I don't dread it. And so I think you perfectly summed it up when this is more about the character uh, drama between the you know mm-hmm. characters mm-hmm. and less about the science fiction. When TNG was about the science fiction and and the characters, and both, it did both, yeah. Uh, because the other one well. was more episodic as well too. Mm-hmm. So they could right. just d- solve one problem, just take the whole um, yeah. episode to do it. So. Yeah. So it is not yet confirmed that we are getting Star Trek uh, Legacy. And it makes me a little worried because there's like desperation sounding a little bit from Terry as he's like telling fans, like, beg for it, ask for it, like, push for it. It's like, well, if this was already a done deal, then you wouldn't have to do all that. So it's making me worried a little bit. But it seems like they're, they got that queue set up and the jack thing, like they already want to continue it. But uh, is Paramount going to green li- light this? Now, here's what, f- what fucking depresses me. Paramount has already green lighted Starfleet Academy as the new series. And nobody gives a fuck about that. I don't want to watch Starfleet Academy. Not even Star Trek fans are like, I want to watch Starfleet Academy. A bunch of fucking newbies, like, not even doing cool shit. Fuck it. No. You got detention. Oh, man. God damn it. It's a detention Like, episode. what the fuck? And is it because there's a power struggle between fucking, what's the guy? Uh, Kurtzman? Kurtzman and, and now Terry Matalas? I, I don't know. But I would put all support, all my support behind Terry. 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 And I want to see. Good job, So Terry. he's doing an AMA on Reddit on Friday. So maybe we might Somebody get an announcement then. Mm-hmm. Or uh, somebody needs to ask him straight up, hey, <laughs> is Paramount good for this? Do you think they want to do it? We recently got a new announcement that Sector 31 or se- Section 31 is happening with Michelle Yeoh as a movie. Now, is it going to go in theaters or Paramount Plus Paramount. movie? It'll probably be a Paramount Plus movie. So that's happening. And again, not that excited. Never really liked Section 31 all that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I am excited about Michelle Yeoh because she's a great actress, right? Uh, so I, I would do that. But fucking Starfleet Academy? Like, no, I'm not, I'm not interested. With hits Star like Trek Halo. Legacy, yes. <laughs> With hits like, hits like Halo, I mean, Paramount's just rolling in the dough for to, to do, like, amazing things. So Halo they, Season 2 approved. Yeah, and, don't, don't and, and 3, like, 4, 5, right? I did they, I don't, they pre-approved I don't, a bunch of them. I don't know. Don't they have, like, don't 20 know. Star Trek things they, going That's on? the thing. That's the thing. It's like, you know, we got Prodigy and we got, we got to Strange New Worlds. No, they're ending Discovery. So this, this frees up some of the budget. Okay. And I'm hoping we go forward with Star Trek Legacy because we need to have some post- uh, Picard stuff, and I would like to see post Picard. And hey, man, Worf is still kicking it. That actor, uh, like I said, Jonathan Franks is doing fucking great as Riker. We, I could still see them. Uh, you know, 
<clears throat> Picard, uh, you know, let's let's give the guy a fucking break. I'll, I'll watch Jordy do anything. So, so Jordy, yeah. uh, Data, Jordy, Data. I, I want to have the buddies. If if you're putting Jordy, you gotta have Data. But uh, anyways, new human Data. So this one was a super long one, but Two you know hours. we have it's uh, <laughs> one hour and uh, thirty minutes, and I'm probably not gonna fucking cut in any footage because <laughs> it's just too much. Uh, so thank you so much. And, yes. um, you know, we do this more for us. Like, <laughs> I don't know if yeah, our audience that. really gives a shit about Star Trek. But oh, whatever. Sure I, I care. I sing the comments. They care. <laughs> they care. They're the oh, ones that do watch it. But some it's people not. care. They're mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, it's cathartic to listen to, you know, people uh, nitpick it and, and critique it. Uh, remember, we, we are critics here and, and, you know, we enjoy it. Um, but we do it out of love and, and wanting it to be better. And so we are excited about Star Trek Legacy if it gets <coughs> made. Uh, not about Rafi Worf, not about Starfleet Academy, Star Trek Legacy, I'm on board for, and Strange New World Season 2, mm -hmm. I, I'm on board for. Uh, other than that, I'm, I'm good. And yeah. of course, Halo Season 2. <laughs> Can't wait. Oh. Can't wait. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. A reminder to grab your tub of our brand new G Fuel flavor. Yes. Uh, really support the show that allows us to do these uh, extra long series reviews for you guys. 30% uh, off code Angry Joe. And uh, that's going to be it. Uh, for reals this time. <laughs> engage. Commence the warp. <laughs> Commence warp speed. Proceed. <laughs> I like I, li I like the idea that Seven is more, uh, you know, Borgish robotic, straight to the point. Get her done. <laughs> Get her done. Yeah, that'd be a that's a good uh, one. Yeah. Uh, Southern captain uh, or do it. <laughs> if we're gonna do Star Wars, I mean, I think Janeway. So it's uh, what it was Janeway's. I don't know. Do it. Anyways, thank you so much, and we will see you on the next Angry Joe show. Uh, and bye. Bye.